trying to figure this out. The people who would lose to Renekton yeah. are generally also going to be bad in 1v2s. Okay. Yeah. So dodging that entirely. Here we go. On to the Rift Determined in blue. Curse Academy in red. Let's see where everybody goes. Top lane so far. Yeah. For Determined Gaming. They might try some sneaky moves here. Even though we don't see it often, Freak. Mm -hmm. Thresh and Annie are very potent in invading. Right yeah. now, Curse Academy is trying to set up. They're going to be going for Rux here. What they'd want to do is they want to get in the lane. They want to come up to that wall that just got blacked out and hook him over the wall and have everyone else fly in. What? Bubba Dub probably going to spot him right here. Goes to the hook and lands it. Here comes the team West Rice. Will they go for the stun with Renek? That's so far not. Still the chase forward. He really could have flashed W. I feel like they could have gotten the kill if he did. Maybe. Ooh. But they forced Rux away with a flash. Well, it's interesting because Rux, Rux kind of flashed right after the mini stun from the hook. It was, I think it was worth the flash. I think a flash W wouldn't have gotten him in range. Hmm. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't try to. Too. I'm surprised they didn't try to throw the hook over the wall. Yeah, I think they kind of ran into Rux while they were trying to invade Red Buff and just kind of made the best of that situation. And actually, I'm kind of thinking in retrospect yeah. anyway. With first blood only being worth what, like 280 gold roughly? It's 60% of the normal value. Yeah, so it's 180 for the basic kill, and the first blood is still worth 100. So it's 280. I bl I'm pretty sure I've seen 280 pop up for the first blood. For the, the killer, past. it is 240. Really? Okay, so that does yeah. get rolled in. Mm -hmm. The first blood gets also rolled in. Okay, so it's 360 total gold for the first kill. Which I guess, to be fair, is probably not worth three flashes. Interesting. So it, that might have just been restraint yeah. by Determined saying, you know what? It's really worth having our summoners up in the lane. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, especially against that jungle Vi yeah. from Curse Academy. Not to mention an Annie down there, like, he's going to make you regret life pretty quickly. So probably Jackson is here in the mid lane, probably aggressively going for the harass. So here he goes with this one. I know something we actually haven't discussed. Um, I wonder how much the reduced benefit of, like, an invade going well mm -hmm. uh, is dissuading teams from being aggressive, you know? Hang because it's, it's almost like... It, back in Season 3, people were talking about how if an invade went wrong, if you get a double kill, it's like, well, the game's basically over from there, so, like, the gold is reduced. And maybe it's just, like, teams didn't like doing it in the first place, but it was so rewarding if it worked huh. that sometimes they'd do it. Uh, this is just a random theory I sure, thought of right now. Sure. That now that it's such a reduced benefit, they're just like, well, it's hard. I, I still think teams should be doing it, but I just yeah. wonder if that's allowing them to do this thing, because even if the other team tries to aggress them, it's like they're not really gaining much out of it. So much time and investment can go into these early game invades. Mm -hmm. You think about uh, a lot of times if you want to invade like five people, you would lose out on a lot of lane experience, and that could potentially actually hurt your laning phase later. Yeah. Additionally, if you actually get a kill, only the person who got the kill can make a purchase, and usually not even an item. Since, like we said, it's a 240 gold kill. Not even boots. There's a gank. All right, Fabi's going to get hit up right there. A little bit of damage coming across. Sheep dropping down a half HP. Flash in for Broken Shard. They're going for this kill. One more attack to go. Robin X Lee gets the kill. First blood going up there. Happy stuff for Determined. Yeah, and now that it's about 3 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, that's almost a full value kill. So mm -hmm. that one is actually fairly impactful for them. Having it go to Robert X Lee is fantastic. Also, the positioning of the lane could not be better because not only do they get the kill gold and all these minions, they are denying Fabi from subsequent waves as well. Yeah, and look at what Curse Academy is going to get from the recalls there. A ward for Annie. An extra Doran's Blade. Okay, not too bad here for Fabi on Caitlyn, but you know when, our, when Robert X Lee to, like, chooses to go back, He's going to have a whole bunch of items ready to go. And he's not going to really be on much of a downside for just staying in the lane instead of recalling early. Yeah. Pick Ezreal. Win lane is generally how Doublelift likes to think of it. Against Caitlyn, though, it's not that clean cut in the need of the game to help because Fabi was pushing them in really heavily. That's what Fabi has tried to do mm -hmm. all of his games on Caitlyn. Only his third death in three games on Caitlyn, but I never mind even die. I got the Still only died twice. The Sheep died though. Yep. Let's get my uh -oh. facts right. West Rice used both of the dashes. Has flash. Can he get over the wall? Try. Nope. Doesn't get it. Mm. West Rice is going south for you, and he goes down 300 gold for the kill. He's gonna go to Rux 151 on the case. T tours. T tours. I blame Fresh Canadian. If I was West Rice, I'd be, bl I'd be blaming Vi. I'd say she knocked me away from the wall, and that's actually what happened. Yeah. Uh, West Rice got knocked a little bit back. He tried to walk a bit closer. Didn't get it. You have to literally be right next to that wall. It's a very hard wall to get. And if there's a champion model in the way, you cannot flash over them both. Oh. West Rice 
should not have tried, in my opinion, because there were people in the way. He just panicked. Okay, well, Broken Jar's gonna look for the top lane. Does not have a friend just yet. We'll see if Rux stays. I feel like he wouldn't, but we'll see. Maybe he gets greedy. Here comes Broken Shard. It's not gonna be the minion, minion wave. wave. He dodges most of it, at least. Here comes the damage onto Rux. Rux has no flash still. 300 health left. Shield goes on. Jumps to a ward. 300 health left. Can One Broken Shard do the damage? No, he's... Not worth it. Not enough damage. Gives it away. Yeah, looked like he might have a chance there. Good job of getting him to go back now, because West Rice will have some time to farm. Oh, what a flay! Catches Babby mid-90 caliber net, forcing the flash, sheep running backwards. That was a hell of a good flay. Yeah, first pick Thresh there from Bubba Dub, getting a quality flay. They're really going to start putting some pressure onto that Fabby lane. You know, if you can keep a Caitlyn lane confined to their turret, you are doing an amazing job. Oh, yeah. Caitlyn lives to push, and if all she can do is last you to turret and fear for her life, then uh, not really doing much. Yeah, not being a very effective officer here. And I gotta say, you know, we're talking about how well Bubba playing. He went 2 17 and 15 during this promotion tournament. So, him kind of being instrumental in a Ouch. kill and a lane domination yeah. now really improved here stepping up in his match. Yeah, tough, tough time for Bubba Dub. Tough time for the entire Determined Gaming team, you know? Yeah. Being the number one seed challenger team coming in, they kind of had the expectation of making it into the LCS. They were super confident. And then especially when they would get 3-0'd in the promotion tournament, a lot of teams wouldn't be able to stick together through that. But, you know, only Arthalon decided to step away from the team. They picked up Prawley, haven't missed a beat, and they're just right back at it, you know? There's definitely some team synergy going on here if they can stick together through adversity like that. Guys, definitely looking pretty good. 400 gold lead here for the tournament so far. Their top lane looking pretty decent for West Rice. A 13 minion lead for him. Early Seekers there for Rux. And level 6 picked up on now most of the champions on the map. Those are pink wards. They both want them. Who's going to well, get them? Level 5, though, for T2. But it's not going to be. Broken is going to get control of that one. Credit goes to Bubba Dub. Yeah. For that, actually. He had mm -hmm. rotated down from the lane, and it meant t 2 did not want to fight Broken Shard. We go fight again though in the bottom lane. 5-5 five, five versus 5-4. Five, Small lead here for Determined. Mm, close one there. Sheep dodges that one. He was also taking turret shots. That would not have been a good hook to land. He wouldn't want to follow that one up. No. Unlikely. They're not even a flash available, so. All right. This guy's safe so far. Only eight minions separating the 80 carries. The buffs respawn and now seven and a half minutes in. T2 is uh, French for Little Bear, I believe, if Twitter's to believe. Do you want to call him Little Bear instead? T2 is kind of hard to say. Sure. Yeah, it's gonna get way too confusing. Uh, yeah, I, I got corrected on. I on know we're supposed to just like agree on everything with that. Well, no, I, I agree with you on this one. <laughs> uh, I got I got corrected actually yesterday uh, for calling Cloudland Eclipses AD carry. It. If oh, I get it right, you guys were calling them. Uh, Hyarnan. For Bevan. No, that's mid laner. Oh. Uh, <laughs> is how we call the AD carry, um, but it was, I think it's Yarnan. Wow. Is a little bit so no H at all. Uh, completely silent H. By the way, Jay, we got correctly. If any player in the Coke Challenger series wants us to pronounce a name, be feel completely free to tell us how to pronounce a name. We have no qualms about it. Yeah. But a lot of these players actually don't care. You'll be like, K tell me how. Oh, they're gonna get it. Ooh, close. T2 Almost got a kill. Yeah, seriously. With the water on top of that. Super worth it. Yeah, because uh, Cloud9 Eclipse also has another guy. You were calling him for Bevan. I, I always called him Febevan. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Huh. I can see that. Didn't even think about it. That's why I thought that's what you were talking about. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I butchered something even worse. Cloud9 Eclipse. Eclipse is easy enough to say. All their names are in their, their like home languages. Yeah. Their top laners in Romanian. Uh, I So I first said uh, Oduamna, and someone was like, no, it's Oduamna. I was like, okay. And then I did that, and someone was like, no, no, it's, it's Odomna. Like, freaking egg. So I don't even know anymore. This is tough. Uh, thankfully, these are all like American players aside from Broken Shard. North America, at the very least. So a lot easier to uh, pronounce them all. Probably, Who, knew, who Robert knew that League of Legends casting would require us to be so cultured? It's like it's an international game or something. Something like that. Weird, right? Anyway, this game's actually going fairly close for Determined Gaming. Uh, they're winning the lane war fairly well right now. Uh, oh, yeah. Most credit going to Robert X. Lee and Bubba Dub in this bottom lane because they're keeping Fabi completely back. You know, the Caitlyn Annie lane wants to get aggressive, but they just have not been able to. Uh, additionally, Broken Charge Lisa's oh. done a lot. Let's Good see if they get out of this one. Shift, the jump in on a Bubba Dub. Ult coming back across, and there comes Broken Shard. Who's going to take the damage? The flash and the kick on the sheep. Beautiful job right there. Kill picked up. The lander coming out. Great turnaround. Really timely counter gank there by Broken Shard. He 
almost didn't make it in time. Uh, Chichiris was trying to make that work with the Vi gank. She only she gets to pick a lane usually, and that's most likely guaranteed gank. That's why Broken Shard was in the area, and they were very, very fortunate to turn that one around. I gotta hand it to Robotic Sleeper, started the arcane shift before Tabers landed to get him out from all that first, because that would have been a likely death for him, but managed to dodge most of the combo. Good stuff here. Thousand gold, determined, making things happen. Lane's still going well, and they haven't even tried to look for a dragon yet. Yeah, and you know another interesting thing is Bubba was bringing exhaust. It used to be a very common sight on supports, but especially with the anti revolution that we've seen recently, almost every support's bringing a knight. I'll see a Sona, Leona, Annie, everyone's going to ignite. Even Thresh usually bring a knight to try and go extra aggressive with their team. Bubba Dub and Robert actually decided to go another direction here, giving them a little bit more defensive edge. I think that's going to come in handy when Jaximus gets involved in team fights, or if Vi tries to go with a more glass cannon style build. We'll see what they go with this one. Looks like the makings of. This is weird because I feel like it's the makings of Phage, but also of Ancient Golem, but also of Elder Lizard here. And I have no idea what Vi's actually huh. going for. I'm going okay, to say. Okay, now it's Ancient Golem. Now it's easy. Ancient Golem. Thanks. <laughs> Robert Exley gonna jump in onto Sheep. Oh, good dodges here, but the Inferno Bomb's gonna come back out. Kill picked up by Robert X Lee, 3-0, all the gold in the AD carry. Yeah, this is working out fantastically for Determined. Bubba Dub is setting up most of these kills, and Robert is just there to get the cleanup. Fabi, though, oh, would have been able to burn Barrier if he landed the Pilt over Peacemaker. Yeah, but, but it's dead. Yep. It's a dragon. Dragon time. Pink Ward secures the vision. Team comes down. And they're able to extend this lead now 12 minutes in. Uh, good play. 2,000 gold now. Determined up. By all the metrics, pretty much, that we can think of right here. Except mm. for number of ninjas. Curse Academy has that one, but that might not also, matter Also, like, much. Uh, vertically on the map, they are down mm. because they are the blue side. Ah, true. Yeah. Also, they have a couple of Yordles, so they're pretty short. Mm-hmm. Actually, equal Yordles. One on each side. Never mind. Equal equal footing in this one. Fabi back to base. Has a BF sword, though, so uh, for as rough of the lane as Ben, is doing an okay job of minions. And is at least keeping the build going forward, though we gotta say Trinity Force done and about 700 gold for Robert X Lee. Also pretty nice. Yeah, Robert, if he gets that Trinity Force, he's gonna look to aggress fairly well. Look oh. out though, Westrice. No ult just yet from Rox. Westrice still running away, 800 health on him. He's gonna make it out. I feel like if Equalizer were up, that they could have gone for that one. Going for the Tiamat build as well. Mm -hmm. Also double Thorns Blades, so that's like, that's all offense so far in Westrice. Really trying to make his presence felt against Rux, despite Rux being able to pick up first blood on him. I think once Restorize can get a Ravenous Hydra, uh, Rux is actually going to be in a bit of danger of dying straight up to him. I think with the Renekton Ultimate running, he'll have enough inherent tankiness, and with the Hydra, enough damage to take down Rux before he can get rid of him. But hmm. we'll have to wait until that happens and see if any counter ganks come. Yeah, because it'll be interesting to watch. Just because Rux has itemized about the, the default defensive mm -hmm. build there, mm -hmm. with uh, Haunted Guys 200 health, Good dodge there by Fabi. Yeah. Secret's yeah, arm, guard. arm guard. Yeah. The item for Rumble when he plays against top lane bruisers. Oh, here comes another gank. No counter gank in place this time. Jump in on the bubble. Have a lot of damage coming across. That will be the kill picked up by Titus. And looks like Robert X Lee going to be safe to back off of this one, but a good kill picked up by Curse Academy. Curse Academy really wants Fabi to get back in this game. Gank top. Okay, there we go. Rock's good in to get knocked around. Jumped into the wall as well. Does not have flash anymore. Pops the ulti. Ooh. Oh, Westrace have to flash from that one. Will survive. Yeah. Hard earned kill. Couple extra turret shots they ended up taking there, but that's kind of the expected result when Lee Sin and Renek can just run at Rumble. Once Rumble gets close to, his really only option is to throw down the equalizer and fight. Couldn't Fuck. fight quite well enough. Yet. No. Fought with all the power of a Yordle, but just didn't quite muster enough. The robot must have failed him. He's going to rumble himself, tried as hard as he could. Robert X Lee now in a bit of a 1v1. Both supports coming back to the to the uh, lane after buying. Got to say, small item lead here for Bubba Dub. Already has the Ancient Coin as both these guys match Sight Stone. Damn, Fabby. Uh, yeah, I mean, really Pulling off the aggressive. moves right there. Didn't take a single turret shot. Almost had no ability for Robert X Lee to counterattack there. He gets out scot free, so that was nice moves right there though, Fabby. Yeah, good play overall by the players. Certainly very skilled individuals. Only 4 to 2 in kills. It's it is a very close game, but we're starting to see turrets fall a little bit. Determined converted that top lane uh, dive into a turret kill itself. It's going to unlock West Race a bit yep. more to roam around. Yeah, also, Prawley has gone for a very offensive build. Hasn't paid for it yet. Jackson is obviously even in farm. Uh, 
but no armor on Prawley. A lot of times you'd see a Ziggs go for a tier and then a Seeker's Arm Guard, mm -hmm. but Prawley just went Double Dorn's tier to a, to a Seraph's or Archangel's Yeah, Seraph. he's trying. He's going to make it to Seraph's eventually. But really, that means Prawley is all out offense, all out farm and push, and he has avoided being aggressed on by Jaximus. It's pretty impressive, and also yeah. no CDR either. Like, normally we see this build, and it's like, oh yeah, but they go Morella Namicon. That's not even the case yet for uh, Prawley. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, oh, well, speaking of... Good damage there from Jaximus, but he's, he's waiting for his cooldowns. Yep, there he goes. Gets them back. Good jump off to the side. Flashes the Q is probably going to get out of this one. But burns his flash. Oh, might not. One more tick. Boop, boop. He's safe. Oh, wow. That was close. Yeah. If probably wouldn't have flashed all of those slick moves by Jaxmus, he would have been done. Most Ziggs actually take barrier against Zed as well, so it just kind of adds to the riskiness of what Prawley had oh, accomplished man. there. Uh, and now they're trying to get some revenge. Good damage on a Jaxmus. Down to half HP right there. Q lands for Bogue Shard. Will he kick? Attack, kick R. Yep. Kick R. Oh, he gets it despite the flash. Kill picked up for revenge. Nice play determined. Yeah, I meant to say he wanted to kick him and then use the Q. Yeah. That's the... The common Lee Sin execute move is you land one part of your Q, then you kick them, and then you get more execute damage out of your resonating strike once they're already in the air. Uh, but he needed to get a few auto attacks in there because he was trying to calculate his damage so he'd be able to finish him off. And he does it just right. That was a nice kill by Broken Shard. That was incredibly close. That last auto that was flashed was the required little bit extra. So yeah. good stuff here, Broken Shard, on a pretty comfortable champion in Lee Sin. I got to say, in terms of getting... A good jungler in there. I think they played champ select well on that one. Broken Shard's been part of every single kill for the tournament. Lots of early game impact for him, and they're looking for even more. He's gonna find one here. What is gonna go for Sheep? No ulti available. No, the play back from Bubba Up will slow down Fabi. Sheep's gonna go down first. Kira's gonna drop down alongside that one. Fabi's still on the chase. Q's gonna land. Robert X Lee on a rampage double kill in this lane. And all of the kills are going to Robert X Lee. He is going to be so threatening when this comes into the mid and late game team fights. Especially, let's take another look at this one. Um, Broken Shard did a really good job of keeping the slows on to people. Bubba Dub got them with just the edge of that play and just the edge of the box. But then you can see Broken Shard thinking ahead of the fight. He wasn't worried about kill securing. He was just making sure that nobody got away. Very well played right here. Seven to two now determined really turning this game on right here. They did get that second, uh, that outer turret there in the bottom lane down for their troubles before. So these tower dives are starting to get turned into turret destructions. Ooh. So yeah. they can keep moving forward. Probably going to probably go death cap next as well. Uh, going to see a Blade of the Rune King finished by Robert X. Lee soon. A lot of extremely offensive items coming out from determined. But yeah. for now, it's all about this dragon. And since they've killed the top turret, Rux won't have to clear that. If they go quickly, they're going to be able to get it mostly uncontested. But if they wait too long, they would run the risk of uh, giving up some of this lead. Yeah. They have about a 6,000 gold lead here. The only way they give this up is if they all sit on top and neutralize it for a long time. This is like the one way that I think Curse of Academy could come back, and they're not even going to go for it. Yeah, they're not close enough at all. Ult's going to come across, bump it up. Not shielding in time, but doesn't matter. 190 gold, 194 specifically per person for that dragon pickup. So slightly worth more than the Season 3 dragon. We've now crested that point at about 18 minutes in. Yep. I know it's based on champion level, but for what it's worth, about 18 minutes is when uh, dragon starts to be worth what it used to be in Season 3. Did you know? Did you know? Yes. Yeah, there you go. Freak knows. Apparently I do. I found out just now. I didn't know that before, but oh. I figured this one out. Here we go, guys. Sheep, only level 8. Poor guy. Kind of low down in this lane. Zero, four, and one Really not a great performance. It seems like the uh, steal away from Thresh might have been helpful as well, putting Sheep yeah. on something slightly less comfortable. Yeah, Bubba Dub's pick was pretty good. It's interesting, though, because Sheep, Annie, Annie, has played it in the past uh, couple games. Thresh is probably usually banned against him, though. Yeah. Right now, let's see if they can take down Westrise. He is an offensive Renekton. He used both jumps. There's the flash over the wall. Ooh, Equalizer comes across, not doing enough. I feel like that was late, but he wasn't in range yet. Yeah, Rux doing his best to try and get something back. You can see Curse Academy's really struggling to try and get back in this one, trying to get any kill they could possibly get their hands on. This type of gold lead this early is dangerous. Broken Shard. Wow, really looking for damage across there. Sheep down to 200 HP, but not getting chased out. Ulti comes in, Flash is not enough. The edge of it picked up there by Prawley, 1-0-1. Yeah, probably farming up a storm and just enough support, but it's really Broken Shard who's going around and making these plays. The push continues by Determined up the mid lane. All three out of turrets now dead. Determined looking for tier two mid, and no one is really there to defend it. It's a five versus two right here. 
and they're just not doing much for this one. Make that a four versus two, I take that back for next to the top lane. But this turret, three hits from dead right there. One, two, and three. Robin actually picks that turret up, and they just poking people down. I gotta tell you, Freak, Determined Game is looking very solid right now. Curse Academy is no slouch as far as teams to play against, and no. this is turning into a bit of a stomp right now. It's almost 10,000 gold, 20 minutes into the game. Only a couple deaths right here. There was the one mistake by West Rice early, where he yeah. missed the flash on the wall. But everything else has been well calculated for Determined Game. And you said they had a very sort of early game focused team. Mm -hmm. Renekton Lane, right? Like Thresh making plays, Lee Sin out there as well. And late game would be scary, but they've got that gold lead now. They've got the item lead, the level lead, the dragons are theirs as well. Determined capitalized off their early game quite nicely here. And good plays all around by their individuals. So, Chris Academy. Yeah, they gotta get something on. We haven't seen Jack Smith do anything by himself with Zed. No. Rux, no Leanders or anything. I haven't, even saw it. I haven't seen him buy a new item in a while, even. Yeah, they're a little bit cold starved. Uh, once they lose control of their outer turrets, uh, they lose control of their jungle, they lose control of the dragon, they can't safely farm in too many lanes. You can see Jackson is feeling great about this lane because he's not going to get free farm for much longer. He's going to have to go respond to some push elsewhere. It's tricky stuff right now. 5-0 and on Robert X. Lee. He's going to have a lot of gold sitting right there. He has got to be way up on the rest of the game. I'd say 1 or 2,000 gold right now. Yeah, uh, ahead of everyone else in the game. So Robert X. Lee really looking to put some pressure on. Yeah, scary guy. Double buff Ezreal. Pretty much, I think, my favorite AD carry for double buffs as well. Oh, yeah. You, you can throw infinite Qs and they all slow. Yep. It's just so glorious. It's like blue Ezreal, but just with buffs. But with more damage. With more damage. Yay. Trinity Force and Ruin King. And more speed, because you get a boost yeah. from Trinity Force. It's awesome. And when you land a Q, you get even more. I like that um, when you kill something, you get movement speed, regardless of how you killed it. So like if you as ult across the map and like last hit a Wraith or something, you get you're like, a little bit boost faster. the speed. Yeah. Um, and so you, you can get some of that during the fights. Tell me something more about Trinity Force. Uh, I feel like you like talking about it, so. Better than you expect on Lucian's ultimate, because it has an AP and an attack speed ratio. So awesome. even though Triforce only has 30... Oh, uh, most of the numbers on Trinity Force start with 3. Ooh, interesting, yeah. 30 damage, 30 AP, 30 attack speed. How much does it cost? 3,000. 3,803. Yeah. Wow, that was exact. Thir yeah. Good work. Which is five. Which is 500 plus 300. The upgrade so cost eight. is also 3 gold, right? Upgrade cost 3 yeah. gold. 3 major components. Yes. And, um... There's so much synergy within the Trinity Force itself. Yeah. And yeah. you know there's 3 blades on it, and then the hammer is kind of behind from the phage. All it's, right. well, it's like a pinwheel. This has been discussed before. Trinity Force is actually a pinwheel, and it's held up by the phage in the back. Nicely let, nicely told. Yeah. I didn't know many of those things, actually. Yeah. There you yeah. go. I, mm -hmm. I have a row in my custom recommended items. It's just six Trinity Forces. <laughs> I've seen that before, yeah. actually. <laughs> it's it's cute. I, I usually buy, like, the third one. I don't usually buy more than one in a game. Sometimes I do. I should hope not. If we're about to win, I'll recall and tell my team to close the game, but after 10 seconds, and then sell and right-click them all in sequence. Oh, dear. I almost never get more than three. I feel like Curse Academy could use a couple Trinity Forces right now. They're just yeah. too far behind on gold. Oh, man. They're just... They can't defend this turret realistically. There's too much siege coming up from Determined Gaming. Uh, everyone on Curse Academy is just... They're just behind in items right now. Jaximus... He would love to have a Last Whisper right now, but even if he goes for Prawley at this point, Prawley's been able to pick up his Zhonya's. I mm -hmm. uh, don't think he can finish off anyone else. He'd have to contend with the exhaust of Bubba Dub, even if he found uh, his way onto a, a squishy target like Ezra. Lowering his damage, not making his life happy. The jump in, Broken Tribe's going to find a slow, I think just barely onto Rux. They're not going to find much for it. The team just sweeping away minions. Robert X. Lee's solo split pushing. I feel like of all people to fight Jaximus, I wouldn't choose the AD carry, mm. unless they really think he can outplay him. Yeah. Maybe buy. he can, to be fair. I think you take him out. Robert X. Lee's got to be sitting on a ton of gold. He hasn't bought in forever. Yeah. 3,000. So, he's actually not much stronger than he said at the moment until he shops. Yeah. He's being a little greed boy right now. He's got to go buy some items. He could, he could buy get Last Whisper straight up. Um, I think Last Whisper. Yeah. He'll want it just so he can finish off Vi and Rumble if he gets dove up. Mm. Like, dived on. Yeah. But for now, I guess they're just clearing out all the objectives. He keeping himself on the map. He's going to shop after this. Most likely. Or Jump over the gonna... wall. There's the recall. All right, Robert X Lee going to shop with the 3,500 gold. But I'm going to say Ruin King, and then he's going to work on his last whisper. Okay. I think maybe QSS just because he can finish the item. 
and I think he can't finish uh, Last Whisper yet. Darn. Okay. okay. Yes. Pickaxe. Yes. Okay. That's where it is. All right. I've seen I've he seen a few Ezreals in my day. Yeah. It just feels like this is one of the games where you're so far ahead, you can skip a damage item and still be ahead. True. And so you, like, ensure the game by not getting one-shot by Zed. Yeah, as nice as QSS is against Zed, I actually feel like GA is just easier and better uh, in a lot yeah. of situations. Especially since he's against Rumble as well, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, equal stats against Rumble, aside from the revive. Um, They're both correct. 45. Actually, QSS is five more MR correct. than GA. Yeah. So, better against Rumble. True. I guess. We'll GA see. He's better against Vi and Caitlyn. True. Because of the armor. Yeah, I don't think you can QSS the channel on Caitlyn Ultimate. Uh, no, you cannot. Okay. It's much like a Nautilus ult. You cannot QSS that either. Okay. It just let, lets you know it's going for you. Yeah. But it's not really tracking it. It's a forewarning. Yeah. FYI, you're going to die. Dude. There's giant sirens coming. And Vi will tie of you soon. Oh, broken shirt. Nope. Good smite there by Little Bear, the jungler of Curse Academy. Ironically, they do have Reverse Annie on their team, so they have two oh. little bears. All right. Thank you. I'm thinking Curse Academy uh, is trapped. Determined is waiting to find a moment where they can take over here. Mm -hmm. I think Baron should be where Determined Game tries to make their next play. Uh, but Curse Academy recognizes there's some split pushing going on. They're going to try and take this turret. It's full health. They barely reach there. Oh, man. The Ziggs ulti is just going to remove the minions, and with no real tank trying to take it. Oh, dear. Curse Academy not going to save Can this West one. Can Westrise make it to start this fight? He's trying to flank around the side. He's going to look for this one. Half HP on pretty much everyone from Curse Academy. My Caitlyn Trap says no. Got Come some on, minions. man. Come on, Westrice. That was your fight. Yeah. Okay, well, at least Curse Academy didn't get anything out of that. Not too much. Yeah. They got some damage out of it. So they got like two turret hits. Yeah. Going down. Yeah. Lower than it was before. Slowly but surely. This game goes for another Slow hour. And steady usually only matter. wins the race in Fairy Tales. Yeah, I prefer Fast and Steady. Yeah. That's just superior in every way. Well, I guess the only way that matters is speed, but otherwise it's equal on steadiness. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Maybe a little bit less maneuverable. Potentially. We haven't we haven't graphed that one yet. We don't know the numbers of maneuverability in this race. Chris Academy. Still trying to keep themselves alive. I mean, I guess for them, they're kind of okay just saying... Every six minutes, you take a dragon. Other, other than that, we're just farming. Like, I feel like yeah, that's... Yeah, they're, the, they're okay with that. I think the Baron the is something they're going to want to take next. I mean, if we were to take this game to, like, 50 minutes, then Curse Academy would start being a little scary. Yeah. Uh, it might even... Like, it would have to be 50 minutes with Curse Academy getting some kills back. Because mm -hmm. at the rate they're farming, they wouldn't even hit items in uh, 50 minutes. Yeah, true. Almost every lane getting out CS by their opponent there. Mm -hmm. Support's winning by three, though, so good job mm. to Sheep right here. You're gonna see. I mean, they're still like posturing around the mid lane, like they want this area, but probably has the ulti back. West Rice forcing the issue here in this uh, right side lane, but he's like very overextended. Right. Just no one's going for him. All right, determined. They have wards in the jungle, so they can see the approach. Yeah. And probably Ziggs was gonna try and cut them off if they came that way. So this is a just a rotational turret they've been able to get, but no fight uh, has been forced from this. So I think they're still okay with that. It's just more uh, medium speed steadiness. From determined. Yeah. Yeah. Medium speed steadiness. Uh, also, four sweepers on these guys, so they're certainly trying to get like the ward control here. Pink wards starting to get put down in the jungle. So they'll see the approach towards Baron as well. Determined certainly around this area. They know Curse Academy will check them. They also have a talisman, so they can theoretically catch up to Curse Academy a little bit faster. Not even a gold generation item anywhere to be found on sheep. Yep. Just playing the, I'm getting wards and slowly, not Mercurial, uh, Mikhail's Crucible. Uh -huh. Slowly but surely getting there. Boots Mobility, not Distortion Boots though. Determined. Right on the Baron, that's a little bit bold. I'm expecting him to peel for a fight. There's the old in from Rux and Leanna, and a couple of these ones. A lot of damage on, uh, as, oh man, the Baron gets picked up by Renekton. There we go, fight starts, double kills so far for Determined. The jump in on Robert X Lee, trying to get away. Will he survive the death mark? He will do so. It's going to be a four for one, no, three for one battle. Sheep going to go down, one left is going to be Fabby. Jump in, Broker Shard lands the oh. Q, hits a uh, trap! It's not close enough to activate it! Oh, well, Fabi gets out. Oh man, that wow. would have been the ace. Yep. But still, what? That was a really overly aggressive call by Determined Gaming. 
that came down to a smite race between Broken Shard and Vi, and it was not even a jungler who secured that bear. They both smited early. Yeah. They both smited and Renekton got it. You know what? Smiting early is at least you got your smite off. Yeah. Uh, the worst feeling is when Baron gets stolen when you haven't used your smite, but still. Holy crap, man, that was a little bit over aggro. Determined Gaming, of course, and even more control of the game now because they won the fight, got the Baron. That's it. There we go. 30 minute, 20 seconds surrender. Determined 12 to 3 in kills, not even giving up a turret.